Now it's my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Tom Costello. Tom Costello is an Emmy Award winning correspondent for NBC News in Washington. He reports daily across all NBC News and MSNBC platforms, including today, NBC Nightly News, MSNBC, and NBC News Now. Mr. Costello has seen firsthand the multitudes that our world contains, having covered a range of topics from the billionaire space race to the death of Pre uh, Princess Diana. He was instrumental and covering the miracle on the Hudson passenger jet land landing in 2009, for which NBC News was honored with a National Emmy Award. He served as CNBC's NASDAQ correspondent in New York from 1999 to 2002 and was on duty when terrorists attacked on 9-11. As CNBC's senior correspondent from 2002 to 2004, he produced documentaries from Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. And most recently, Tom covered the insurrection at the US Capitol and the arrests that followed. He also has reported extensively on the coronavirus pandemic and the deadly 2017 Unite the Right rally in Richmond, Virginia. After growing up in Centennial, Colorado, Mr. Costello graduated from CU Boulder with a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism and started his career at Nine News in Denver. He was invited to be our commencement speaker by CU Boulder's senior class. Through his work informing the world on issues impacting our shared future, Tom Costello embodies our university's highest values of shaping tomorrow's leaders, impacting humanity on a global level, and being innovative in his work and career at CU at, as a CU alumnus. Please join me in welcoming Tom Costello. Thank you, President Solomon and Chancellor DiStefano for that very warm and uh, gracious entry and invite, uh, in invitation and uh, an introduction. To the senior class council, the board of regents, professors, staff, alumni, parents, and family members, thank you again for this incredible privilege to come back home to see you with uh, the honor of speaking to you today. I mean, wow, is this an unbelievable day or what? Hello, CU, hello, class of 22. Okay, let's dispense with the mea culpa right up front. I know I messed up on social media. I know I, a few months ago when I said go buffs and very quickly you guys set me straight. So thank you for all the good hearted tweets and the emails. Hey boomer, yeah. hey vintage guy, give up the Blackberry, join the 21st century. I'm trying. Okay, so let's hit the reset. Sco Buff, Sco CU 22. Hey guys, look at where you are. Stand up. Stand up, graduates, all of you. Stand up and turn around and look at this place and look at that blue sky. And you can't see the flat irons, but you know they're there, right? Wave to your parents who got you here, who are so proud and happy that they have written the last tuition check. Wait, no, keep smiling, keep waving. You need them to pay your cell phone bill, your car insurance, keep waving. And just for a moment, just for a moment, put down the cell phone and just soak this in, breathe it in. Look at what you have done. After four years of hard work, okay, maybe five or six, who's counting? You made it. This is the most beautiful campus in America and you are in the middle of it.
It's why I brought my wife, Astrid, who was originally from Belgium. She went to college there. I brought her and I brought my daughters, Charlotte and Chloe. Now, I tried. I tried to convince them to go to see you, but they went to a college on the East Coast. But President, no, 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 no. I know, no. So President St 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 Stefano, without me writing a check, can we make them honorary buffs today? All right, there we go, honorary buffs. <laughs> it is a great privilege to be asked to share this moment of your success with all of you, with your friends, your families, your classmates, and your roommates. And we have all been through just a tremendously challenging two years. But for you, for this campus, this city, navigating through a pandemic, studying remotely, coming together after a mass shooting, caring for each other during horrific fires that destroyed a thousand homes. You guys can sit down. <laughs> Sorry about that, should have noticed. <laughs> You exemplify tenacity and selflessness and community. Colorado has noticed, and I'll tell you, as I now work in Washington, D.C., the country has noticed. So on behalf of the entire alumni network, we salute you, the students, the faculty, the staff, for all you have accomplished, for your perseverance, and the examples you have set. You have all made us proud. Yeah. And we are back, and we are in person at Folsom. And if you don't mind, I mentioned my daughter, Chloe. She graduated during the pandemic, and she did not have her own four-year commencement uh, acceptance opportunity like this. So if you don't mind, Chloe, welcome to your graduation, too. Now, I know what you're thinking. You just sat through four years of, of lectures, and now you've got to sit through one more. But here's the deal. These guys up here promised me I'd get more than the two minutes I typically get for NBC Nightly News or the Today Show, so I'm running with it, all right? <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember a whole lot from my commencement speaker at the event center. It was Robert Redford, the Academy Award-winning actor, who also went to see you. Now, true story, 20 years later, I was at the NBC studios in New York, and I looked over and I realized I was standing next to him in the men's room where men do what men do. Hey, you're come on, my commencement speaker, I know you. No, he, I did not say that. I was tempted. I promise you, though, for the rest of your lives, when you meet new friends, new coworkers, neighbors, no matter where you live, especially if you're in another state, when they ask you where you went to college, when you say see you, you will hear the same response. Oh, I always wanted to go to see you. It's true. But as we are gathered here today, you guys, we are also in the presence of giants, past and present. 145 years of giants who have changed this school, this state, this country, and the world. So if you are both excited and terrified about this day and what comes next, you're in good company. So were all of those giants. And yet look at what they did, what they believed in, what they built, what they fought for, and so will you. Sitting among you right now are people who will make both profound and subtle changes in the coming decades, discovering a new cure for cancer, developing a TV show, composing a new hit musical, writing poetry, making a difference in a child's life, inventing a smartphone, clearing, cleaning our air, our oceans, or saving the life of somebody in an ICU. The possibilities are endless. So while this moment in your life may be a bit intimidating right now, embrace it. This is the time to be bolder. So. I thought I would share with you a few risks that I took over the years that paid off. And yes, you will probably have to start out at the bottom of a career ladder somewhere, but chances are you will not have to start any lower than I did. Because underneath section 216, look underneath your feet, that's where I started. Down there, our student TV studio was beneath section 216, 
beneath those bleachers, down a long hallway tucked underneath into a dark corner. We all learn how to do interviews in that studio, how to write and edit our stories, run the cameras, get in front of the camera, read the breaking CU news. We had typewriters, not computers. None of us had ever heard of the internet before. Spam was something some of us lived off. But it was down there, down in that dark hallway in a makeshift studio that I made CU TV history. I dropped my first on-air F-bomb. Yeah. My first and last on-air F-bomb. No, thank goodness. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Thank goodness I learned my lesson on CU Boulder ca Cable TV. And you know what, it was Boulder, most people had heard an F-bomb here before. But it was a very good early lesson. Someone is always listening, somebody is always watching, even more so today. When I graduated, I landed my first local TV reporting job in El Paso, Texas. And it was great, kinda. I barely made any money, not enough to pay my rent and eat, but I was reporting from both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border. And it was there that I read a magazine article about a legendary network news correspondent based in Washington who reported every day for NBC. His name was Robert Hager. Now remember that name. That's my job that I want someday, I thought. That's my goal. But I had a long way to go. I was 23 years old barely getting by in El Paso. I needed some experience in a much bigger city. So when Nine News in Denver offered me a three-month tryout, I jumped at it. There were no guarantees, but I was coming home to Colorado and that was a, worth, a risk worth taking. Three months turned into six years, and then it was time for another risk. Now my wife and I had just gotten married, and I mentioned to you that she is Belgian. I'd always wanted to live in Europe, always wanted to go to grad school, so I quit my job at Nine News. We sold our house. We moved to her hometown near Brussels where I started grad school at the age of 31, studying international business. My friends at Channel 9 thought I was crazy. I was one of the top reporters at one of the top stations in the country, and I was just going to quit and move to Europe. But I figured it would work out. Somehow it would work out. New country, it would be great. Sure enough, the night before my last grad school and final, my last grad school final, CNBC called, offered me a job as their London anchor. New country, new job, new city. We had a brand new baby, a lot of excitement, a lot of stress, but we went for it. Two years in London, then six years in New York for CNBC covering the stock markets. But if I was going to accomplish my dream of becoming a network correspondent, I was going to have to do something which led me to a rather audacious move at a charity event in New York City that I was asked to attend. NBC and CNBC were sharing a table, the seating chart carefully arranged by the front office. When I arrived early, I saw that I would be sitting at the table with Brian Williams, the new anchor of NBC Nightly News. But his name card was on the other side of the table, and this was a big table. And I thought, I gotta talk to him, but I'm completely on the opposite side here. So I very slyly walked around the table, slid my name card in front of the plate next to his, just a vice president for NBC News, pushed it aside. A few minutes later, Brian walked in, he did a double take, somebody had clearly messed with the seating arrangement, didn't know anything about it. Halfway through dinner then, I got up the courage to say, what does it take to get on your radar? Oh, you're on it now, he said. <laughs> Pretty sure he'd figured out who did the swap. But with Brian's help, a few months later, I moved from CNBC to NBC News, the mothership in New York. I had made it, I thought. It could not get any better. Until a few months later, when Tim Russert called me, the legendary anchor of Meet the Press and the Washington bureau chief, Tim called me to say Robert Hager was retiring. Remember that name? The same network correspondent who I had read about in El Paso 15 years earlier. Would I be interested in moving to Washington to take the very job I said I wanted when I was just starting out? So my dream had come, suddenly come full circle. 
After a lot of hard work, long days, taking a few risks along the way, and that rather cheeky move at a dinner in New York. Actually, today, it's come full circle, because I am back at Folsom Stadium, only I'm standing on top of the bleachers, not underneath the bleachers, <laughs> starting my career. <laughs> Anything is possible. My goal when I started was to see the world on somebody else's credit card, to search for truth and facts, talking to the world's experts on any given topic, any day. And as you know, your degree does not suggest you know it all. It, know, it suggests that you know how to learn, how to investigate, how to contemplate, how to search for answers. And your bosses will surely demand honesty and accountability from you. And you will surely demand that, demand that someday from the people who work for you. At its core, journalism is about finding and holding our government, our elected officials, our communities, ourselves accountable to the democracy, to truth and to facts, no matter how uncomfortable or how inconvenient. It's not easy when the national discourse is contaminated so often with disinformation and falsehoods. It demands that we get up every morning committed to listening to all sides, to helping the audience find the truth through facts and context and perspective, exactly what you have been doing here. So think about your time at CU. The best professors, those who really made you think, are often those who you may not really agree with. But the way they said something made you rethink your preconceived ideas and dig deeper for answers, right? You know, the Founding Fathers called for common sense in our government, but as one of my professors here at CU said, no political party has ever had a monopoly on common sense, and often it's in short supply. And this is where it is, in fact, about you. We need you. As a society, we have become so intolerant of each other screaming at each other, screaming each other down in public forums, airports, planes, trying to gaslight or humiliate anybody who doesn't agree with us, even when those are the same people who we turn to every day. When you call 911, do you ask the arriving firefighters who they voted for before they attacked the fire? No. When the ER doctor says a family member needs emergency surgery, do you question their motives based on their party affiliations? No, we presume people are acting in good faith as our neighbors, as our fellow Americans. And if the facts on the ground change, if the diagnosis changes, if the fire grows larger, we expect the response will also change. And I've met and interviewed so many people, medical professionals who over the last two years barely took a day off as they responded to the COVID crisis, learning about this new and evolving threat, changing their approach as the months progressed. And when COVID changed, they course corrected and they kept at it. They saved countless lives and they allowed us to gather here today. It is time we listen to each other, rethink our own preconceived ideas and convictions, give each other the benefit of the doubt that the other person wants what's best also for their country, their community, their kids, their husband, their wife. As someone who has spent a career trying to listen to all sides, I've found that I am more drawn to people who speak in commas and question marks and caveats than screaming exclamation points. Anybody can scream. You are graduating from a top university that for four years has encouraged you to study, to learn, to explore, and to come to fact-based conclusions. Regardless of your major, you have earned fact-based degrees. Physics grads, let me hear you, physics grads. Newton's three laws of motion, law of inertia, law of motion, and for every action there is an equal but opposite. Thank you. Music grads, how many notes are in an octave? Eight, unless you're a jazzer, and then it's 12, right? Chemistry and biology grads, atoms are made of protons, electrons, and neutrons. History grads, the Declaration of Independence pronounces, we find these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. Facts matter. Truth matters, honesty matters, civility matters. Our social media culture, the way that we talk to and about each other, 
It starts with us, everybody. So let's change things, you and me. Enough of the online rants, of the profanity, of body shaming, racism, anti-Semitism. Enough of up versus down, right versus left. If we change things, we will unlock the vast potential of your generation and the entire country. And if we don't start, who will? As you start your post-CU life, those are actually secrets to success. In whatever you do, kindness, respect, and outreach. Almost everybody is thinking of themselves 90% of the time. That's human nature. So get into the other person's 90%. Acknowledge them, listen to them, compliment them, forgive them, make them feel valued and special. Speaking of forgiveness, I had the great privilege of being invited to an evening with Nelson Mandela in Switzerland when he was the president of South Africa. After being held prisoner for 27 years by the white apartheid government, he was making an appeal to white South Africans to come back to the country that they left to help rebuild South Africa. It was an astonishing moment of forgiveness, extending the hand of peace. So why not us? A few more secrets to success and happiness as you leave the warm embrace of CU. Show up to work 15 minutes early, leave 15 minutes late. Don't expect that participation medal that you got for playing soccer as a kid. You gotta earn it now, you gotta show up, make yourself indispensable. Share the credit with others, accept the blame for any failure. Think before you tweet, and then just don't tweet. Yeah, just don't do it. Put the phone down, take in the real world. Live life at full throttle. Sing like Phoebe, dance like Ross, flirt like Joey and Monica, Joey and Rachel, and love like Chandler and Monica. Take risks and be bolder. You will rack up some scars, some wrinkles, some gray hairs, an occasional bruised ego, but life is about the journey more than the destination. Do good, be generous. Try not to drop an F-bomb on TV. And when you come back, when you come back to this great school and this great, great campus over the years, and when someday you bring your own kids and you stare at that inscription over Norland Library, I promise you the words will take on greater and greater meaning. Who knows, only his own generation remains always a child. Never forget this place, this moment that launched you. I never have. And speaking to you today has truly been the greatest honor of my life. SCO, CU22, and SCO Buffs!